Okay, guys, greeting from a uh, Missourian who's stranded in South Carolina right now. Uh, I'll get right to the point here and show you what's going on. Apparently, this is a common issue right here. I've got a 2001 uh, Ford Excursion 7.3. It's a one-ton chassis. And uh, before we left on this trip, every once in a while, I noticed uh, kind of a vibration sound, a little uh, noise and a vibration in the vehicle. That sounded like you were going over the... Uh, going over the... I don't know what you call them, the little, the little grooves in the pavement on either side of the intersection. And uh, it sounded exactly like that, but it only lasted for a second or two, and then it'd go another week or so without doing it, and then it'd do it for another second or two, and that was it. And I'm like, well, we're never going to figure out what this is. So uh, I let it go a little bit, let it go, and it only did it very little, very little. So uh, we went on this long trip. We drove all the way from Missouri... Uh, here to South Carolina helping a guy move I was towing this trailer and about the last hour or so of the trip it started doing it again started running over the uh, or started making the uh, the rumble strip noise again and it was shaking it the whole vehicle was vibrating and for a while there I thought it was the rear axle maybe wrapping and the rear uh, drive shaft was getting out of alignment and those u-joints were vibrating uh, because the trailer was bottoming the back of the truck out. We were resting on the jounce bumpers, and it was a really heavy load. But uh, it was whenever I would hit a, uh, a bump in the road, or whenever the front end would bounce, it would go away. And it would also come back when I hit a bump, too. So it was really weird. Uh, so we managed to get here. We got the trailer unhooked. We're unloading it right now. And in the meantime, I'm tearing into this. Thank God we brought some tools. I got my cordless impact here, worth every penny of it. And uh, uh, I did. I went on the Ford forums, and they were talking about a real common issue here are these axle spindle bearings. And contrary to what most Ford dealers will tell you, you can actually get these bearings separate. You don't have to buy the whole $500 hub bearing assembly like they're going to try to sell you. So you can get these separate. So... I did the driver's side, didn't find anything wrong with it. I'm like, crap, I'm not going in the right direction. But uh, I came over here to the passenger side, and I'll show you all of what I had to do here to get this out. It's really easy. Take the wheel off, take your lug nuts hub cap off, take this little snap ring off that holds the locking hub in. You take that out, and uh, you're going to take your brake caliper off here. These are all 21 millimeters, by the way. Brake caliper bolts lug nuts and the nuts for the hub bearings all 21 so it's nice and convenient you'll want to make sure you have a, uh, a swivel though where is it here it is you want to make sure you have one of these swivels because otherwise you won't be able to get in there very easily with an impact so make sure you have one of those this only took me about five ten minutes to tear down into it was really easy I uh, just got the front end jacked up here and I don't have one, but just as a safety precaution, you should really be using jack stands. It's a lot safer to do it that way, so just be safe there, guys. I unfortunately don't have one. I'm doing whatever I can. So, uh, But anyway, so once you take all these out, you take these four nuts off the back of the hub bearing here. And in this case, one of the studs came out as well, so no big deal there. You'll take this little 8 millimeter bolt out. That holds your ABS line in here. Um, like I was saying, you want to take your brake caliper off too. Disconnect it from these little retainers here. Just set that off to the side there. And what you're going to see inside the hub here, here's the side that faces uh, the brake rotor right here. you got your brake rotor here. Here's your little backing plate. And inside, right here, is a bearing that went bad. As you can see, there's nothing in there. Where are all the little rollers at? They literally fell out as I took this out. They're all laying right here. Look at that. Here's the old one from the other side. Right here it is. Here's how it should look. That's the old one, okay? Here's the new ones I got. But this is what this one looks like. Look at all that rust and all the needle bearings just fell out. Now, before they fell out, when I took this out, they were literally cocked sideways inside the bearing here. And that is exactly what people were talking about on the Ford forums. And this is exactly what causes your problem. These bearings run dry. Uh, they get contaminated with water. 
you're supposed to grease them every 60,000 and <laughs> this vehicle has 230,000 miles on it and it's never been done so it kind of doesn't surprise me but that is what happens that bearing dries out it goes bad and if you don't get this done in time if you keep putting this off putting this off you will eventually wear this axle out completely and in some severe cases you can actually damage the inside of your front axle here and then you got to get a whole new front axle talk about a nightmare and a repair bill super high don't even want to think about that so if you have this problem don't put the don't put it off this is your most likely cause right here these bearings were only 12 bucks a piece and like I said four dealers are probably gonna tell you you need to buy the whole $500 hub assembly you don't I just picked these up at uh, O'Reilly Autos. You can get them from Napa Auto Parts, etc. Make sure you get a good brand like Timken and that, something that's going to hold up. But that is what you need. And uh, they're really easy to drive out. What I, what I do here is I just take the hub, flip it upside down like so, rest it on the stud. And in this case, I have a 25 millimeter socket. So we're just going to slide that right down in there. Take our hammer here, slightly tap on it, doesn't need much. And there's your old bearing right there. Now I don't have my new bearing uh, greased up yet, so I won't be able to uh, show you a video of me putting it back in, but you get the idea. What you're going to want to put it back in is a 30 millimeter socket or a socket that the outside diameter will press evenly on the bearing like so. So you can see how that bearing fits around there because you don't want to push the bearing in sideways and damage it. So all you got to do is back over Grease it up really well, grease the bearing really well. I got axle grease right here. And uh, grease the inside of that so it slides in easily. And do the same thing very carefully what and evenly. Drive the bearing the in. On it. And once you've got the bearing driven in all the way, put everything back together and you're good to go. So for those of you having this issue, hope this helps. Ford Forms definitely helped me out. I'll have a link to the uh, post that I had on there and other posts as well. So don't put it off like I was saying or you'll screw your axle shaft up there. It's easy. It only took me about 15 minutes to do the other side and I thought I'd just take a video and show you all here what's going on. Hope this helps out and uh, be safe driving.